57 signs you're drinking too much. I'm James Swanick, founder of Alcohol Free Lifestyle. Let's roll through them here. We're going to deal with health, wealth, love, and happiness. And if you experience even just a handful of the following signs, then uh, it's probable that you have a drinking problem. Now, a drinking problem might be different depending on each person. The extent of the problem is what I mean. But, you know, some of these things here that I'm about to go over and outline are what hundreds of our clients have been telling us uh, over the years now when they first come to us and they're considering uh, enrolling with us, uh, engaging our stop drinking services and this is a lot of what they've been conveying to us, certainly in the first week uh, when we're supporting them. So let's get right into it. 57 signs you're drinking too much. Just a reminder, uh, if you're listening on the podcast or you're watching on the YouTube channel, if you'd like my alcohol freedom formula, which is a free guide, which outlines the same process that we take all of our clients through to help them stop drinking, uh, then you can go to, let me just get the link here. I've got to make sure I get it right. The link is alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash podcast, alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash podcast. If you go there, uh, you can enter your details. I'll send you out uh, what's called the alcohol freedom formula, and you can read that in about 15, 20 minutes, and that will support you in stopping drinking. And if you are an entrepreneur and executive, you're over the age of 40, you're successful, you're committed to excellence, and you'd like professional support stopping drinking from Yale and Harvard educated coaches inside of a business mastermind uh, because a lot of our clients or most of our clients, in fact, almost all of our clients are financially successful uh, over the age of 40, uh, business owners, and executives, but they just can't stop drinking. That's who we really support. If you'd like to speak to one of our coaches, you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash call, alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash call. Okay, let us get into this now. 57 signs that you're drinking too much. Health, wealth, love, and happiness. Let's do health. You have disrupted sleep. A lot of our clients tell us they wake up at three o'clock in the morning sometimes. You feel like crap in the morning. You're tired. You're sluggish. You're foggy. You're irritable. Number three, your triglycerides are elevated. Number four, you have high blood pressure and or you're on blood pressure medication. You're overweight. You've got unwanted body fat. You have acid reflux. You take antidepressants. Your liver enzymes are getting higher. Joint pain. You have sore joints. Inflammation. You can see it in your face. You've got uh, puffy eyes. You've got wrinkles. You're swollen around the neck and the throat area. You've got puffy cheekbones. Man, you should have seen how I looked when I had inflammation when I was drinking. I called myself jokingly the marshmallow man because I was so soft and puffy. Uh, for women, menopausal weight gain. You know, maybe you're also feeling older just because you're going through men menopause and, you know, you've got that weight gain that you don't want. The alcohol contributes to that. Maybe also if you're a woman, hot flashes are more intense because alcohol exacerbates the hot flashes. So, you know, any amount of alcohol is going to increase the negative feelings of going through menopause and experiencing those hot flashes. Uh, our clients tell us that they experience a lack of libido. That's men and women. Uh, our clients tell us they're embarrassed to be naked because of what they call the middle age bloat. And again, alcohol is contributing to this because you're just drinking dead calories. You're eating more because you're drinking. You're not exercising as much. You're not as healthy. And it's this vicious cycle and you get what's called the middle age bloat. Uh, alcohol increases the risk of cancer. So even just knowing that you're increasing your risk of cancer, that's what's going on with your health. So even though you may not see it initially over years or decades, you are increasing the likelihood that you're going to uh, get some kind of cancer later on in life. Number 16, you get the drunchies, which is the drunk munchies. You know, you're eating well during the day. You wake up in the morning and go, right, today I'm going to eat really well. And you do really well. And then you start drinking at night and then you start eating poorly. You eat junk food or you eat more than you uh, wanted to eat. Now you've got the drunchies and you're eating more calories and then disrupting your sleep and waking up with regret. Number 17, your gut health is a mess. You have gut issues, GI distress. GI stands for gastrointestinal distress. When you go to the bathroom, it's a mess. I mean, of course, when you go to the bathroom, it's a mess anyway. It's just being human, right? But 
it's a mess compared to what it could be. Gut issues, real problems. So there's some of the health problems that our clients tell us. Let's go into wealth. You own a business and your business is stagnant or suffering or being held back because of your drinking, because the drinking is causing procrastination, poor strategic thinking, and inability to stay consistently focused. Number 19, you're leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars on the table because you're not focused. You're not in momentum. You're not in flow. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars. We've had clients who've come through, stopped drinking for 90 days inside of our Project 90 program and told us that they've made a quarter of a million dollars in additional income. There was a gentleman by the name of Guy Gaetano. He's a, in commercial real estate over in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and he did three additional deals during his 90 days with us that he says he wouldn't have done uh, if he had been drinking. Because he wasn't drinking, he had clarity and focus and energy. He did one more deal per month of the three months he was with us. Cumul cumulatively, the additional income that he generated for himself was $250,000. Think about that. People mistakenly think that, oh, I'm not spending that much money on alcohol in terms of you know what you're actually outlaying to buy alcohol. The real monetary loss, in my view, is the money that you're not generating because you are drinking. That's where the real income loss is. I mean, it's not necessarily loss, it's just not gain. You're not generating that additional revenue or income because you're foggy and irritable and distracted and tired and lethargic. Number 20, you're not being smart with your retirement decisions. I mean, obviously the decisions you make today financially affect the quality of your life later. And when you're procrastinating and you're foggy and you're irritable and you're kicking the can down the road, you're de either delaying retirement or you're not being as strategic as you could be about your retirement, which in 10, 20 years, 15 years, however long it is, that's going to put a lot of strain on you in later life. Um, you know, you're delaying your retirement. You might have to work longer than you desire to. That's going to completely affect your life. Again, you know, maybe we, we don't see it in the day-to-day -day when we're drinking, but these this daily drinking can really compromise our later quality of life as it relates to our financial health. Uh, number 22, you're spending thousands of dollars a year on alcohol. Some of our clients even tell us they have expensive wine collections. We've got people who've got cellars and they buy lots of wine. And I was just over at a friend, a friend of mine's house recently in the Hamptons. He lives in Amagansett there in the Hamptons and he has this big, big... Uh, house lovely there he's got a beautiful wife and three lovely children and uh i was staying with him uh, and his family and i went down into the uh the, i guess the basement area where the spare room was and i looked and there was a cellar with looked like dozens maybe a hundred of uh, expensive bottles of wine i'm not sure how much money went into that but uh you know you're spending thousands of dollars a year on alcohol now some listeners here who might think again who cares it's okay it's you know so what if I got $10,000, $20,000 worth of alcohol, whatever I can afford it? And again, like I said a few minutes ago, it's not necessarily what you've spent on alcohol. It's the money that you're leaving on the table because you lack the focus and, and clarity and strategic thinking to generate more. But nevertheless, what you spend on alcohol still adds up, right? Uh, and in many cases, it can be thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, number 23, you've been passed over from senior leadership positions. Uh, in your company because of mediocre performance. We have a lot of clients who are executives. Uh, you know, some people make 600 grand a year, others make 400 grand a year, half a million dollars a year. And that might sound amazing money to you. You're like, wow, that's incredible. And it is. But at the same time, they could be making 750, a million, more bonus structure, higher bonus structure. And they're not because they're just stuck. Likewise, we have clients who make, you know, quarter of a million dollars a year, $250,000 a year, more modest compared to those numbers I just referenced. And they'd like to make 400, they'd like to make 500, they'd like to have a high bonus. They'd like to get more involved in the company, but they're producing six or seven out of 10 performance. You know, it's not rock bottom. They're not in danger of being fired, but they're coasting along and they're not advancing in the company, which results in not making additional income or revenue. And, uh, you know, that has a cumulative effect. 24, you're coasting through the ranks. You're numbing yourself with alcohol. That kind of relates to what I just mentioned before. Number 23, you're coasting. You know, you're just kind of meandering along. You're comfortable, but also you, there's discomfort in the comfort because you know you're coasting along. Uh, number 25, God forbid you get a DUI 
drinking under the influence. This can cost you between $13,000 and $27,000, not to mention it can also cost a life. You could kill someone. Um, won't cost you anything if you kill yourself, but it's certainly going to cost you and your family something if you injure or hurt someone else. Um, think about all the things that uh, happen if you get a DUI, depending on you know, what you blow into the, into the bag, what the, you know, how far over the limit you are, that affects the financial cost as well. You've got bail. Bail can to be bailed out if you, if you get put in, in the watch house for the night or the jail, whatever they, they call it, can be between $150 or $2,500. You've got the towing and the impound of your car. That can be between $100 and $1,200. You've got uh, higher insurance premiums. Uh, that'll add up between five thousand and ten thousand dollars a year, probably. Defense attorney twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars. Court fines one hundred and fifty dollars to fifteen hundred dollars. You've got alcohol treatment and education that you'll be forced to do. Licensing fees, jail fees, jail time, sentencing, chemical testing fees, proba- probation, supervision. If you decide to invest in an ignition interlock device, which doesn't let you start the car until you blow into it. That'll cost you about a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred dollars. There's cost to get your license reinstated. There's community service supervision fees. There's the alternative transportation. I mean, imagine you can't drive to work or you can't drive around. Now you've got to get Ubers or taxis or buses or something. I don't know. And that that'll add up depending on how long your your license been license has been suspended for. That could be a thousand, fifteen hundred, two grand. All of this is before you may kill someone. You know. Or maybe you're injured and now you've got to pay all these medical costs. Maybe someone else is injured, you've got to pay all their medical costs. So this stuff, you know, when we take away the human element of killing someone, maiming someone, injuring someone yourself, the financial cost is huge. It could be 30 grand. And that's what you're risking every time you're drinking too much and getting in a car and driving. 26, medication costs. You're going to, you've got to keep buying cold and flu medication. Uh, from your drinking. You know, you get sick, you're prone to a cold, uh, trips to the doctor, triglyceride pills. You're not sleeping well because of your drinking. You've got to buy sleeping pills, antidepressants. All of this stuff adds up. 27, oh, this one's a nasty one. You're headed for a divorce. Whether you're the man or the woman, whoever's the primary income earner, you know that divorces are very, very expensive affairs. You're going to have to pay half child support. You're paying lawyers. You're dividing assets. You got the emotional strain. Oh, divorce. You know, people go, oh, I only spend $10,000 a year on alcohol. Well, how much does a divorce cost you? You know, then you, you're separated from your children. Now you've got to get therapy. Now you're paying for therapists. You know, anyone who's been through a nasty divorce will know that lawyers on each side are trying to get there. They're trying to get paid. They don't necessarily have your best interests in heart. I mean, they've got your best interests in heart to a degree, but they've also got their own interests um, in play, and it serves them, to, you know, for you guys to be arguing and having protracted legal debates. Oh man, divorce, expensive. All right, let's move on to the next section. Next section, I should say, love. Uh, you know, what are the ramifications? What are the signs that uh, you're drinking too much when, as it comes to your love life? I mean, by love, I mean relationships, you know, with a wife, husband, or children, family members. Number 28, a strained marriage. Your wife or your husband's threatening to leave you. 29, you're not present with your children. You know, you're not present with them now. They grow up pretty fast. That's going to show up in resentment later on in life, which is going to compromise your quality of life. You are going to want to spend more time with your children, have a closer connection with them. Um, as you get older, but maybe there's so much resentment from them because you're not present with them now that they're so messed up and, you know, there's they don't want to have a relationship with you or, or as much as you would like to have with them. Number 30, uh, your teen kids are avoiding you and they won't bring their friends over. Teen kids are embarrassed by you. 31, you see your teen kids now experimenting with alcohol. Maybe they're in, you know, 15, 16, 17, even 18, 19. And you feel hypocritical telling them not to. It breaks your heart to see your children experimenting with alcohol, drinking, maybe getting drunk. breaks your heart. But you're a hypocrite because you've been drinking in front of them all of these years. And not just drinking in front of them, but drinking too much in front of them. Number 32, 
You wake up in the morning and you don't know if your family is fine or angry with you. Did you say something the night before? Did you snap at your children or your wife or your husband? You wake up and you just don't know. You can't remember. Or if you do remember, you're unsure how they responded or how they reacted because it was a little bit foggy because you drank a little bit too much. Number 33, this is a big one our clients tell us, the fear of success. You know, you're afraid that if you stop drinking and you actually get energetic and clear and happy, that your marriage or partnership is going to collapse because, you know, your wife or your husband now or your partner won't do the same thing as you, won't improve, won't grow, won't succeed. They'll stay the same. And now the gap between you two is so vast that it's an unsustainable relationship. Fear of success is a big one. And it holds a lot of people back. You know, like, like what would happen to your relationship if you suddenly grew so much and so beautifully and got the body that nature intended you to have and you slept well and you had the energy and you had the clarity and the focus and you got a smile on your face and your significant other doesn't come along or come along at the same speed and stays in their habits. The fear of success, that is a big one. James here, pardon the interruption. I just wanted to share some of the results that many of our Project 90 clients have been generating in their life because of not drinking alcohol for at least 90 days. Indipal Johal from California says, I'm having more fun alcohol free. Victoria from Colorado says, I'm feeling so much happier and positive. Craig from Washington says, I feel more freedom. And John from New York says, I'm feeling so much happier. If you'd like to get your self-confidence back, if you'd like to have more joy, more peace, more happiness in your life and you are ready and willing to get outside professional support to get off the stop-start cycle with your drinking, join a like-minded community and finally nip this drinking issue in the bud, then I invite you to go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash project 90, read through, watch through all the details and if it feels in alignment, then you can schedule a 15-minute exploratory call with one of our coaches. You can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash project 90 and the link is in the show notes. Let's get back to the episode. All right, let's move on to happiness. This is a big one, 34. In fact, happiness goes all the way through to the end of this, which is number 57. 34 to 57 is all to do with with happiness. This is, again, uh, 57 signs you might be drinking too much, health, wealth, love, and happiness. Uh, This is what our clients have been telling us uh, over the years. We've been doing this now since 2015, supporting uh, business owners, executives, uh, people committed to excellence to stop drinking. They've succeeded in all areas of their life, or many areas of their life, but not drinking. They just can't stop. They're in the stop-start cycle. They're not necessarily an alcoholic, but they know they drink too much and they know that that's compromising quality, uh, their quality of life. All right, happiness, number 34. Um, they lack self-confidence because they're trying to stop, but they can't. And all of these things are adding up, the aging process, they're overweight, the problems, mediocrity, all of that contributes to a lack of self-confidence. Number 35, depression. Alcohol heightens sadness and depression. Number 36, stress and anxiety. It causes more of it. People mistakenly believe that drinking alcohol relieves them of stress and anxiety, but the exact opposite is true. And that is is that it pours gasoline on an already flaming fire. It creates more stress, more anxiety. Number 37, you've said something embarrassing and you feel mortified. You're mortified, compromising how you feel about life because you've said something that you shouldn't have. You're lamenting the past. You're dreading the future. Will you ever get this alcohol thing fixed? If you don't, what's going to happen? Number 40, you've, you're middle-aged and you feel like time is running out. I mean, time is running out if you're middle-aged. I mean, do the math. If you're listening to this and you're over 50, say, you may only have 20 more years on the planet. 20 years is not that long. I mean, think of, the, think of when you were 30 now think of when you're 50, those 20 years and what you did in that. That's not that much time. It's not much time. I mean, I'm 47. I'm about to be 48. And, and I think back to when I was, uh, sorry, 27, 28. That was only 20 years ago. That wasn't that long, that long ago. I can think back to when I was 40, which is only eight, almost eight years ago. That wasn't that long ago. Like you may, as you're listening to this, may only have 20 more years left on the planet. That is a frightening thing to come to understand. And so, you know, as it relates to alcohol, if you are continuing with these habits that are compromising your quality of life, why the heck do you want a 20 
20 more years on the planet living a compromised happiness style of life. Surely you would want it to be the most fun, the most connected, the most joyful. But, you know, this is what we do when we drink. You know, so if you're middle-aged, time is running out. What are you going to do? Keep drinking? Or are you going to stop? Number 41, feel like you're just drifting through life. There's a book by uh, Napoleon Hill called Outwitting the Devil. He actually wrote the book, um, Think and Grow Rich, sold millions and millions of copies. Excellent book about mindset. He also wrote a book called, called Outwitting the Devil. And in that book, he talks about the danger of drifting through life, being a drifter, just coasting along, that melancholy. I mean, that adds up over time and all of a sudden you go, oh, I've squandered my life. Drinking will make you drift through life. Number 42, it feels like you've become stagnant, just sitting still, stagnant in your life, in your health, your wealth, your love, your happiness. You know what stagnant water does to people? It makes them very, very sick. In fact, stagnant water, imagine like water that just hasn't moved in days or weeks. You know, it goes all green and moldy. moldy. It's actually considered, excuse me, it's actually considered um, category three black water. And it causes bacteria like salmonella, viruses like hepatitis E, um, various parasites and mold, right? So that's what happens to stagnant water. You know what happens to stagnant human beings? They die spiritually. I mean, you may not die physically, even though we're all dying. That's the process of aging, right? You may always have water and food and a roof over your head and shelter, but you're dying spiritually. You're dying emotionally because you're stagnant. Do not be like stagnant water. Get moving. Uh, number 43, our clients tell us um, that they feel like a fraud, that they're an actor or actress pretending that things are okay and that you have your life together, but you don't. Your colleagues think you've got your stuff together. You've got a nice wife, husband, children, you smile when you go into the office, but you're drinking too much and you're unhealthy and there is marital strain and you're not present with your kids and you're sluggish and you're tired and you're feeling like a fraud. Do you know how tiring being an actor is? It takes a lot of work. And that's what you're doing every single day if you're drinking. Uh, if you're drinking too much, I should add. Number 44, cognitive dissonance. You know, you're asking yourself, how can I be so successful in every area, but I just can't fix my drinking? You know, like you got your, excuse my French, you got your shit together, you know, like you got some money, you're making good, got a decent business, you got the pretty wife or the handsome husband or the kids or the, you know. How can you be so successful in all these other areas? You've accomplished so much, but you just can't fix your drinking thing. That's a big one, cognitive dissonance. Number 45, you don't want to identify as an alcoholic. This is a big one. Nobody wants to identify as an alcoholic. And you know what? Probably you're not an alcoholic, but you've just had society convince you that you're either an alcoholic or you're not an alcoholic. There's nothing in between. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You know, like... if. But maybe you're you're thinking that you're an alcoholic. Am I an alcoholic? That question is going off, and you hate that. You hate the fact that you're even asking yourself that question. Number forty six. You're scared that others may think you're an alcoholic. Nobody wants people to think that you got a drinking problem or you're an alcoholic. You're scared others may think that. Number forty seven. You're scared others will view you as boring or exclude you if you suddenly don't drink. Imagine that like you do stop drinking, you get power over your drinking habits and now you're rocking energy, and clarity, focus, you're feeling good, but you're also scared that your friends or colleagues or family members are going to view you as dull or worse, they're just going to cut you out. Oh, we can't invite John or Sally. He doesn't drink. He just, oh, we got to like mind our behavior around them. That's a real thing, that, that fear that other people will, will think that you're dull. Number 48, you're scared that you won't have fun. You're actually scared that if you quit drinking, you're not going to have fun anymore. I saw this actually on an Instagram reel the other day. Uh, the actor Rob Lowe was saying that was his biggest fear before he stopped drinking, that if he quit, he wasn't going to be able to have fun anymore. He was going to be dull and boring and have to retreat from society. In actual fact, the opposite is true. You have more fun. I know I've been doing it since 2010. When I stopped drinking, you have more fun. You create more new healthy friends, and you can also keep the ones that you've got because everyone just gets on with life, whether you drink or not. We show you how to do that inside of our 90-day 90, uh, 90 day stop drinking process. We show you how to socialize with people, have fun, what to say. We give you scripts on what to say and how to say it to people 
in social situations if they ever interrogate you as to why you're not drinking. But we show you tricks where they won't interrogate you. In fact, they'll be admiring you and asking you curious questions out of admiration rather than out of interrogation. Um, number 49, you're judging yourself because you're feeling like you're wasting your potential. A lot of our clients tell us the story in their head is, I know I can do better, but you don't do better in this area. So you judge yourself for it. Number 50, you're sad and devastated at seeing the damage that alcohol's done to your aging parents. If your aging parents or parent is still with us, then it's sad to see them get old, right? And you know that alcohol has contributed in part to that. It's not might not be the only thing, but you know, if alcohol challenges have run through your family, it may have been a contributing factor and you're devastated at seeing the damage that alcohol has done to them. And you don't want to repeat the same mistakes. Number 51, our clients tell us they're afraid that it's too late, that they're too far gone. Many of our clients are in their 40s and 50s and 60s. They've been drinking for decades, two or three decades, some cases four decades. Oh, I'm too far gone, too far gone. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. So you're scared that it's too late. You're afraid, too late for you. Number 52, you're tired. You're just exhausted of beating yourself up inside. You should be able to kick this habit, but you haven't been able to. Number 53, you're jealous and envious of seeing others thriving who are alcohol-free, and they're succeeding, but that's for them. It's too hard for me. So you're envious. You see other people doing it. Oh, it's easy for them. It's hard for me. You want what they have, but it's too hard and too tough for you. 54, you're overwhelmed. You have no idea how to deal with life's challenges other than drinking alcohol. How the heck are you going to get through a day if you can't seemingly relieve this stress and anxiety with alcohol at the end of the day? You're overwhelmed with, with challenges. You've got a daughter or son or children, or wife, or husband or work, financial strain or aging parents or whatever's going on in your life. You're overwhelmed. But the idea of not being able to get through that and deal with that overwhelm without drinking is just overwhelming. Number 55, you feel helpless. How do I function without alcohol? I don't know how to fix this. I'm sick of it. I keep waking up doing the same thing. I'm, I feel helpless. I don't know where to turn to. I'm not going to AA. I can't go to an AA meeting. No way. That's the worst thing. I'm not going to rehab. Are you kidding me? I'm not that far gone. And so now you feel helpless. Where do I go? What do I do? Do I read books? Do I listen to podcasts? Do I, what? I, I got nowhere to turn to. Because society has said, well, you've got to go to AA or you've got to go to rehab or you just got to be good enough to figure it out on your own. There is another way. Number 56, the fear of aging. They call it, I, call, I hope I get the pronunciation right here. It's called geras, uh, gerascophobia or is it gerascophobia? I will have to double check that. Maybe you know, might know the pronunciation. You can send me an Instagram message at James Swanick and let me know. But um, the fear of aging, more wrinkles, lines, gray hair. Alcohol speeds up the aging process, speeds it up. It's incredible how much youthful, how much more youthful you look when you stop drinking because the puffiness leaves the skin. The, sh the bloodshot eyes leaves the face. There's a study out of the UK that shows that if you stop drinking for just 14 days, there's a 33% drop in visible wrinkles and lines on your skin. Isn't that incredible? And then number 57, I promise you 57, is the fear of success. What does life look like without alcohol? And for many of you, you have no idea. And so you have that fear of change. Change feels messy and tough, doesn't it? And so you have this fear of success. Who will I be as an alcohol-free person? That's not my identity. I'm a drinker. I'm John the drinker. I'm Sally the drinker. What am I going to do? I, the, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. If I'm not drinking, how am I going to have fun? What am I going to do? What am I going to accomplish? Who will I be? I mean, that is scary. I get it. The fear of success. In many cases in life with us humans, the fear of success is scarier than the fear of failure. Fear of success. Who will you be when you are glowing and energetic and thriving? It's a lot of fear and it prevents people from stopping drinking action. From stopping drinking, I'm sorry. It prevents them from taking action, the fear of success. So there you go. There are 57 signs that you may be drinking too much, 57 things that our clients have told us. Which ones did you resonate with? We'd love to hear from you. 
Uh, again, if you'd like my alcohol freedom formula, you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash podcast. I will send it out to you. It's the same process that our Yale and Harvard educated coaches coach our clients on. And if you would like to uh, schedule a call to have an exploratory call only about our 90-day process, which I've been referencing a couple times inside of this uh, episode, um, then you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash call. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I am James Swanick. Uh, please do remember to subscribe, uh, leave a review, share this episode with someone that you think may uh, benefit from it. I'll talk to you next time. See you later. James Swanick here again. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I want to send you some free stuff. If you haven't yet got the alcohol freedom formula, then you can get that at alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash guide. The YouTube channel is alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash YouTube. I put out lots of educational videos on my Instagram page at at James Swanick. You can also find me on TikTok at at James Swanick. If this show has benefited you, I would so appreciate you leaving a review and giving it five stars. We have a five day no alcohol challenge, a 30 day no alcohol challenge. You can get details over at alcoholfreelifestyle.com. And if you would like to apply to be part of Project 90, which is our flagship process where you get a community, seven coaching calls per week are available to you. A like-minded community, mostly folks in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, then you are welcome to apply. You can get all the details over at alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash project 90, and the details are in the show notes. Thank you again for listening. I will catch you on the next one.